Hello, my name is Brian Mulligan, and in this video I thought I'd explain a little bit about gateway importing inside of Smoke. Uh, now I use Smoke a little bit different being at a broadcast uh, station, so I've never actually uh, brought in an XML or an AAF and done a conform. Uh, I pretty much bring all my video in raw, I edit it, and then I export it back out again when I'm done. So since there are a lot of new users with Smoke on Mac and a lot of people interested in Smoke on Mac, uh, I thought this video might benefit them because I'm using Smoke in sort of an offline, online uh, finishing session simultaneously. So here we are in the source area. And we can go over here to the blue pop-up, which is where our library is. And what we can do is we can either choose the default clip library, which comes with every project, or we can uh, create a new one. So if we just hit new, I can go down here and I can hit promo clips. And now my choices are default clip library or promo clips. So we'll choose Promo Clips and we'll just open it and go inside. Now the library is pretty much the database uh, setting where all of your video is going to be uh, imported and, uh, and anything that you know is permanent on the system will be in your library. So we'll oh, go into the library and we'll open it up. And your library probably looks a lot like this. You can see the name of the Promo Clips up at the top that we've named it. Named it. And the blue pop-up shows you the default clip library as well, so you can sort of toggle between the two. So for importing through the gateway, we'll go up here to the top left corner where it says single view, and we'll actually switch it to dual view. And what dual view actually does is just bring you, uh, you can actually see two libraries at the same time. And just think of a library as, as sort of like a big folder where you can store all your clips, and you can organize them in, in any way you want. Uh, what you can also do uh, with these two libraries that are actually uh, part of this project is that you also have the gateway. And the gateway is really just a little server and, and some background processes in the system that go out and look at uh, the other drives and folders on your, on your computer and looks at the media there and allows Smoke to talk to it and import it in and work with it inside of, uh, inside of your project. So that's what the gateway is. So you can basically go into Browse Network and up the top, you can see where you've got your computer name. And if you open that up, you've got uh, probably your frame store that it's uh, said there, and then the smoke gateway. So if you open up the gateway, it's really just starting to look at the folders on my system. Now, I have a USB disk mounted on the system, so it is in the MNT directory and USB disk. So if I just select that drive right there, I can exit the network. And now in my blue pop-up here, I now have the gateway is now pointing that at MNT USB disk, and I can use that. So when I select that, it will start looking at the folder structure for this USB disk. All right, and inside here is really just a lot of P2 files, uh, media that we have. Uh, we shoot P2 uh, HPX 2000 uh, here at the station for all our uh, news and promo uses. And we just take the contents folder off those cards and we drop them into little project folders here. So that's what these are. So if I choose one, like Jib Studio 611, and select it and open it up, it will scan this folder and try and find all of the usable media inside of it. So by selecting it, it now sees all of these clips, which are actually P2 clips. If you want more information on a clip, you can click on it swipe to the right and you get a large viewer here where you can scrub this clip. You can also scrub it down here in the small proxies. So here you can look at the name, the format, the resolution, the uh, frames per second. You can also look at other metadata being uh, the gateway it came from and then the path that it came from. And the path is actually very important because this is where Smoke will constantly look for this medium. So the path is really just where this is mounted on your system. So I've got a USB disk, it's an MNT, USB disk, Jib Studio 611, the contents folder, the video, and then the name of the MXF file. You can actually set up defaults for different file types for importing. If you go down to File I.O. and your import preferences, you can actually select a format that you want to work with. And if I select P2 in this case, it will give me the properties that I can sort of set up as defaults and save them. Uh, for the P2 media. So I can either grab the tape name from the essence or the directory or the file name. Uh, I can choose you know, where the time code is coming from. I can go into the clip options. I can go into the image. It will look at the aspect ratio from the clip or it will scale it to full HD. 
which is useful in this case because uh, P2 media is DVC Pro HD codec is 1280 by 1080 by default. So uh, it will automatically take these clips when I drag them up and, and sort of pop them out and make them full raster uh, HD at 1920, 1080. So each of the file formats can actually have its own little you know, settings of different ways to import stuff, um, depending on whether or not you know, it's just a simple Photoshop sequence or it's an R3D file or an XD cam. Uh, you can set up different properties depending on you know, the uniquenesses of, of those m media. Now, I've created my project with proxies, and I do that with a very specific intent. Uh, the media I grab is HD, and it's all based on, on a USB drive. Uh, which obviously is not going to play real time. Now, since I edit, uh, now since I do my creative editorial and not just to conform, I usually sometimes import a lot of media in. So, you know, I may bring in not just a few minutes of clips for a 30 second spot, but, but I may bring in, you know, an hour's worth of video to make a 30 second spot. When I go into my project settings, uh, I can go over to the proxies setting and I will set my proxies to be conditional so that anything over a certain file width will be converted into like a 50% proxy size. And the quality of the proxy size you can see here is I'll, I'll choose draft and you can sort of see by the list here uh, you've got a lot of different ones you can choose uh, pretty much being the, the best quality at the top uh, which will take a little longer to generate or the worst quality at the bottom which will be the fastest to generate. Now when I import a clip these proxies will get made in the background. So I can continue working and it's not really a problem. But I do that so that the proxies will actually be on my frame store and I can work in real time without having the lag that I get from you know, a slow source like a USB drive. Okay, so back here in the library, I can pretty much choose my clip. And if I drag it up, Smoke will pop it in and you'll see this little pending render on it. Now what this pending render is, is that it's actually making uh, proxy frames in the background. And as I just sort of scrub this clip along, you can see that more and more frames are getting made as I, as I go. So if I just sit here for a while, these frames will continue to be made in the background. Now, this media is still residing on my USB disk, and that's where smoke is pointing to it. The proxies are being made in the background, and those are actually ending up in my frame store, but they're 50%, so they take up less space. Also, the audio is also being uh, left on the USB drive and is staying there as well. Having proxies on my frame store allows me to work with these clips in real time and do my editorial without having to bring in the full res HD clips. If I choose a couple of clips here and just drag them in, Smoke will go off and make these background uh, proxies for me. Now, if I hit Control Zero in the library, you can look at what's going on in the background processes, and you can sort of see that you know this clip is uh, busy going on here. It's at three percent. The other ones are waiting, and as we're working and bringing other clips in or shuttling through other clips, uh, these will continue to work in the background. And if I just exit my background tasks, then I'm back here at the library, and these clips, like I said, are slowly making background proxies. You'll notice that the MXF icons here on these clips are a very light gray. There's two ways to bring things into a smoke library to, to work on them in your project. One is to simply drag the media up like I showed you here, uh, which does not copy the original material. And ex the only thing I'm doing right now is putting uh, proxies on my frame store. But this drive always has to be mounted in order for smoke to see this material. The other option is to go down here at the bottom is store local copy. Now if I click this before I make an import, then when I import something it will actually copy the material from the USB drive. It will convert it into DPX frames and we'll put those all on my frame store as well as the audio it will bring in as well. So if I take this clip and bring it in and drop it down. It too will do a background process of bringing this in and it will also continue to make proxies. So if we click over again to hit control zero and look over the background tasks you can see that those were done at 100% and we've still got this one that's starting out now that I just dropped in. You'll notice two different things in these clips. One 
The clips I brought in before, which are not being copied, have a light gray icon, and they say MXF because of this being MXF material. The second one that I'm actually bringing in via a store local copy is being converted to DPX frames on my frame store, and it will tell me the difference uh, by showing me a dark gray icon on your proxy. Okay, so that's kind of how you can tell the difference of how it works. If you look at the metadata for these clips, they show you the path and all that good stuff. And if you look at the same metadata on this clip, same thing. It's all right there. Even though this clip here is being stored on my local frame store, Smoke is still actually referencing it here in the path. And that's kind of useful for a couple of reasons. One, when this clip is done, processing in the background, and, and it is now permanently on my frame store. If for any reason I needed to uh, free up some frame store space, or I realized mm, I didn't really use this clip in my editorial, but now it's taking up a lot of space in, you know, on my frame store, I'd just like to get rid of it. Well, instead of trashing the whole thing, because you never know, a change may happen, I may want to put this clip back in. But if I just wanted to get rid of the copy on my frame store, I can do that. If you select the clip, you can go down in here to Tools, you can go to Store Media, and you can say Unstore Copy. And if I hit Unstore Copy at this point, this clip will magically change back from a clip that was converted as DPX frames on my frame store to clearing those DPX frames, but still pointing at the material on the USB disk via the path, which really is a very cool way to work. So in working with these soft import clips, as they're also known to be called, you can convert them into frames on your frame store just in the same way. Go down to Tools, hit Store Media, we can select this clip, and we can hit Store Local Copy. And what that will do is you'll see it instantly changes the icon to a dark gray, and instantly fires off a background process so that it is busy working in the background, putting these frames on my frame store as DPX frames that I can play in real time if I need to. So that's the difference between storing a local copy or, or not storing a local copy on your frame store.